Hello Eternum, this is that Yi guy. Mutations came out this week, and personally I have already pushed to tier 6, and I know of several others who's already go to 8, as well as some people in the community who's able to do 10. And after talking to them for a long time, we agreed on the list of things that you need to focus on if you want to push as high as possible. The first thing, and also the most important thing we need to pay attention to, is actually the minimum gear score requirement for each of the mutation tiers. So as you can see here, the tier 1, it is recommended that you have 602 average gear score. Um, and you can find your average score here. Um, so expertise is different from the gear score, and gear score is also weighted differently based on what piece it is. I'm going to go over how you can determine the gear score and how you can maximize it, try to get as high as possible. And the reason that the gear score is important is because your damage that, that you deal to the enemies as well as damage you receive will be scaled based on the gear score. So um, uh, Mind Rage at Arcadia or Omega uh, has uh, very helpfully compiled some information found around and came out with this chart which I will link down below in the video. So you can kind of reference it and kind of tell right, all, right away what you need uh, in terms of effectiveness. So he covered uh, the 80% to 100%. What this means is that the bottom of the pie um, will be where you need to be to at least do 80% of your normal damage to the enemy as well as only taking 120% damage back. So, for example, for level 1, uh, you can see that uh, average gear score of 82 is needed to get to that effectiveness. So, um, yes, you can see that for level 2, it goes drastically up. And as we go and push the higher mutation levels, uh, it became much less forgiving in order to get um, effectiveness in combat. So, it, as you can see, level 3, you will want... 599 gear score in order to be 80% effective. So um, my party has actually attempted level 3, but our gear score at the time was way too low. I'm going to show you like that run did not go very well because we're all like 590-ish. Um, none of us was above 600 average at the time, I think. And then once again, once we went back and upgraded our gear, the very next run, we just absolutely crushed it. So that's just something to keep in mind. Gear score is going to be one of the most important things for pushing specifically mutator levels. So uh, you need to get your gear score up if possible. So now that we know that gear score is very important, how do we maximize our own gear score in order to you know get better uh, ratings, um, and average gear score in order to do uh, just more damage and take less damage inside the mutators. Well, for this, I'm going to reference this is Reddit user Swanovan. He came out with a very nice breakdown and analysis on how um, different part of your gear affects the gear score and whether or not you want to go all in on the one piece or whether or not you should upgrade everything equally and things like that. So I'm going to go over that now. I've already asked him for permission and he has uh, given me the go ahead and to reference all of his chart and everything. But please do show him some support. I'm going to include the link down to this post down below as well. So um, as you can see, he has broke, broken this down very nicely. This is pretty much not to scale um, how much each piece will affect the average gear score. but this gives you an idea of what's most important. So you can see that weapons are going to be the most important thing in terms of determining the gear score, followed by uh, chest, head and legs, jewelry, and then hands and feet are going to be the least important. So that's really relevant because um, each piece, doesn't matter which slot it is, will take the same amount uh, if it's the same gear score to upgrade. So what I did here before finding this out was not optimal exactly. It's because I have my jewelry up really high and I kind of neglected uh, some important pieces like head, 
and uh, uh, pants. So ideally, you want to prioritize the head and pants before you move on to the jewelry to kind of maximize the gear score. And I tested out uh, his chart and it makes a lot of sense. So for example, if I um, change any other part, uh, the gear score won't shift all that much. I'm gonna go, for example, um, I'm gonna go change the glove from 608 to um, 600. And yeah, while this did go down, it's not a huge difference. But now if I change my weapon, it's gonna go down two points instead of one, even though the gear score difference is very similar. Um, so this is, yeah, so far I've, from what I've seen, this is very accurate. Since weapons is the most accurate, uh, you want to prioritize the weapons first. But as he does mention in this post, um, you don't want to just go all in on the weapon because the shards that you need to upgrade each piece also goes up exponentially. So ideally, you want to prioritize, for example, weapons uh, without getting into all the math. You want to kind of upgrade everything sort of evenly, but based on the order. So if, say, you have everything to 610, what do you upgrade next? Well, you should upgrade your weapons first, and then your chest, and then everything else you could refer to a chart to figure it out, or just everything else comes after those pieces. And that way you're gonna get sometimes one higher average gear score just by prioritizing the right things. So you might be wondering, how can you get... As you can probably see, uh, pushing these mutators are getting quite kind of difficult. And not everybody is going to have access to the legendary pieces that you can upgrade. And honestly, the most important thing is to have the legendary piece that to have the gear score, because it will make more of a difference than individual pieces and the perks on them ever will. So this is a situation where void band pieces actually becomes one of the most desirable ways to push the gear score. So personally, I'm going to upgrade my Void Bent uh, pieces. It is excellent for PvE and as well as being kind of universally useful. So uh, it will be really expensive to kind of gear yourself out in optimal gear such as this. This will be an example of a really optimized piece. Um, it has the correct stats. It has a weapons perk uh, for the weapons I'm using as well as having the ward for the specific expedition that we're running. So ancient ward, as you can see here, is a really desirable trait. Um, getting a perk with it is really difficult, especially, most importantly, we need to have this at legendary. So while this is impossible to get for most people, um, getting full set of void band is something that you can achieve, you can work towards. So Void Band is going to be the way to go, in my personal opinion, if you want to get a fast start into uh, running expeditions. So uh, another thing you can look into is uh, the assess jewelries and accessories. So the most important one is probably the amulet slot, because there aren't that many amulet legendaries that you can get that are good from the expeditions yet. Ideally, you want to just get health percentage and legendary and the other roles just for the sake of mutators don't matter as much. So you want a legendary amulet, um, but yeah, this is the hardest part um, of all your gearing because for armor, even if you go all heavy void bent pieces, you can still perform well. You can just shift your gear around, kind of change your build around to adapt for it. As for the rings, um, there are actually good choices for strength and dexterity. And unfortunately, not so much for the other ones. You, there are very good legendaries you can farm for the ring slot that gives you other main attribute. But the easiest one is the smooth bone ring and the featherweight ring, which draw from Lazarus. So these are best in slot rings that can potentially drop, but they are strength and dexterity respectively. And as for the earring, um, the people who are running strength can have an easier time because they could get the Doom Chance earring 
from Genesis. This, if you can get it at Legendary, would be a huge boost to your uh, setup. Uh, so overall, the weapons, uh, you I, you want the Bane for the specific expedition you're running. But aside from that, um, it's pretty doable to get Legendaries for the most part. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to have a gear score. And honestly, you can spend some shards. Consider it an investment to push you higher. It doesn't have to be the piece you stick with forever, but the higher the mutators are, the harder, higher you get, the easier it is to get more shards to upgrade your future pieces. So that pretty much covers it in terms of gearing. So a lot of people talk about different strategies and everything else, but not enough people, I think, are talking about the scaling of a gear score and how much of an impact that makes. So I wanted to have this video out to quickly cover that and hopefully kind of explain if you're having difficulties in mutators, this might help him explain it. So once again, uh, I will link down below the two resources. So the first one is the one by MindRage uh, that kind of covers the range of where you want your gear score to be on average in order to push a mutator. So the tier uh, level one mutator is very forgiving and the tier two is pretty doable as well. But once it gets to three, that's where most people get into trouble if they don't have a very high average gear score. So until then, I recommend running normal Genesis and normal Lazarus. They will give a lot of bumps to your gear score. So I'm going to be posting my guide for my personal DPS build for pushing Lazarus and Genesis. So it's going to be good because uh, this guide can just transition into both uh, build for both expeditions because it is going to be a strength build. It will be easier to build up and easier to transition and swap weapons for different expeditions. And anyways, thank you so much for watching. I wish you best of luck. And if you have any questions about mutators, please, please ask down below. I've spent hours talking to different people, people who has pushed towards the end and people who are having trouble. So I have a decent amount of knowledge uh, regarding the expedition right now. So please do feel free to ask. I will try to answer down below as fast as I can. And as always, if you enjoy the content, please leave a like and or subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.